Hello YouTube, Phoenix Landing Studio, Michael here and welcome. Today we've got a video all to do with getting the sounds from your iPad into your DAW which is on your PC computer. So if this sounds riveting to you, stick around. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. Let's get on with the show. Alright, so what we got is we've got some really good sounds on the iPad and the big problem is I don't own an Apple computer I own a PC so there's a number of ways of getting your sounds from your iPad to your PC and I'm gonna go through a couple of them right now and this has been months in preparation I've been banging my head against the wall on some on some of these attempts because true to form when you're dealing with Apple you're gonna be dealing with um, connections and converters adapters not wanting to spend a bunch of money I really had to do research in order to achieve what I wanted to, to achieve in the studio so the easiest way of getting sounds from your iPad to your PC and into your DAW is to use first of all is to use one of these this is made by monster and it's two 3.5 it's it's just a single cable and it's got, and it's two ends are th the 3.5 jacks on the end stereo what you do is you connect one end to the headphone socket on your iPad or iPhone that's if it still has uh, a headphone socket they're, they're going to be done away with pretty soon as of the taping of this video 2020 um, I have an iPad 6 and an iPhone 7 so they still have the headphones but rest assured pretty soon that no Apple products gonna have a headphone socket so anyway one of these into your headphone socket on your iPad get a quarter inch jack converter stereo pop it on the end of that put that this end straight into your audio interface which then talks to your computer and there you go. Now, uh, some people really trash the um, the headphone, the digital to analog converters in the, uh, the, the, the the preamp in your headphone socket in your iPad. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think they're too bad. Some people say they're not studio quality, but at the end of the day, if you're recording sounds from an iPad and you're at a pinch, this is the easiest way to do it. And like I say, the quality is not that bad it's not as bad as what people say so what's the other way of doing it well I think the the best way of doing it is to follow this example uh, so from the power of editing I'm going to put a little diagram up okay so what you can do is you can pause the video and you can have a look at that diagram but um, I'll just talk you talk uh, you through it now. Let me angle the camera. So what we've got here, we've got uh, iPad 6, and it's connected to a converter or a camera connection kit that has dual uh, USB-B outputs on it. And it also has the lightning charging connector, okay? So that's going into the iPad. And like I say, it's two USB connectors. I paid about $20, $30 for this. I refuse to pay $70, $80 for the Apple one. This is the knockoff brand that you can get at your local store, okay? As far as I'm, I'm aware, I haven't had any problems, issues with it. I know some people say they don't work, but this, is, this has been working fine for me. So yeah, $20, $30 for this. What's connected to this is my Artoria key step my little MIDI keyboard so in order for the iPad to see the keyboard the keyboard goes into the connector now the interesting bit the iPad has to have a separate interface or USB mixer I've gone for the USB mixer this is a cheap Behringer four track mixer um, about a hundred dollars hundred and twenty dollars maybe I know you can get you can get two track as well or uh, um, which is even cheaper, like $80 or something. Um, but this this is great. This is the uh, Behringer Zenith 
Q802. And um, what it is is the iPad connector got the USB connection from the mixer going into the connector, which then talks to the iPad. So the iPad now recognizes the keyboard and the mixer. So the signals from the iPad generated by the keyboard go into the mixer. The outs, the auxiliary left and right out of the mixer, just using, I'm just using mono quarter inch jack, go, go to the front of my Focusrite audio interface. Right here, the left and the right. So now I'm using the pre's, the mic pre's in the focus right to amplify the signal coming out of the mixer, which then go into my PC because my PC only has one USB slot on it on the back to hook up the audio interface. And that's how I get signals from my um, from my synth into my DAW so I can record them now. I now have the, the, the massive array of, of uh, synthesizers and, uh, and you know I could even sample stuff off YouTube or sample, sample you know anything off, off, uh, off, off the internet now at my disposal. And I've got basically I've got an Apple product talking to a PC, so that's that's the way I do it. Um, you do have to watch your levels. You have to make sure that the the volume on the on the uh, iPad is up to at least seventy five percent. The outs on the mixer have to be at a reasonable volume as well. The mixer, the the Behringer mixers, have have got a bit bit of a quirk to them. Um, you have to kind of tell it um, there's a couple of buttons on here that are a bit confusing when it's when it's trying to send signals out but uh, you work your way around that easy enough once again it's a it's a line signal by the way that's going into your audio interface so you don't need um, you know you don't need to um, phantom power it um, so it's pretty much good to go now What's the noise floor like? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, depending on the source of the iPad app, say, the, the instrument, that what you've chosen, some I found out that some of the iPad synthesizers have a bigger noise floor than others. That's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is, I know I know what a lot of people are probably screaming at the screen right now, saying, well, why don't you just get a MIDI um, USB hub and just hub it all, you know, go through the hub and send, send all the USB signals out from the hub? Well, the problem with that is, first of all, not all apps and iPad camera connections recognize a hub. Um, I've had some mixed uh, issues with that, so it's not that reliable. And the other thing is, um, some of the hubs that you can buy, like this one, these come with a USB that goes into your computer, on the front of your computer. Some computers have a USB connector on the front. Uh, mine just so happens to have two, which is a good thing, uh, which means I can run my the power of my iPad to power my iPad. I can run it into the front of my computer. But if I if I if I was to run everything through this, hook this up to the front of the computer, you get a noise issue. You get a ground issue. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure certain it's a it's a ground issue or it's a proximity issue. It's like um, when uh, guitar players when they put pedals on the pedal board and some of the pedals, particularly overdrives and fuzzes, if you put them too close together, they get this proximity hum, noise floor issue, um, which can be sorted out. I think it's the same problem with this. I may be wrong, but that's, that's what I think it is, and I've tried it. Um, so not all hubs are, are, are good. I've yet to try a hub that is just goes to straight to the mains. That may solve the problem. 
if if the hub goes straight into the mains and then you uh, then you plug in your keyboard your ipad and all that sort of stuff your mixer and everything into it maybe that'll eliminate the hum and maybe the ipad and everything else will be able to recognize each other so far this to me is the best way to do it so for those of you out there who've been scratching your heads for a long time and have been in the same situation i hope i've uh, um, helped you out there and if you have any other ways or easier ways of doing it please uh, put a comment in the comments down below and i'd love to hear from you and um, that's it take care now see you later